Hey yo, what's going on everybody? This is David and today I wanted to talk about the 5090 that's going to come out tomorrow and if you should buy it for yourself if you are a VR user and if you're planning on playing PC VR games. I actually think the 5090 could be especially beneficial to VR gamers and I will lay out some of the reasons why in this video. But first of all, if my voice sounds a little weird, excuse me for that. That's because I was recovering from a sickness over the weekend. I don't know what happened. Saturday, I woke up and I just could barely walk. But anyways, I'm getting better and I am recovering. So finally, thank you, Jesus, I am getting better. Now, me personally, I am going to try to get a 5090 Founders Edition tomorrow. I have my ways. Hopefully, I can get one. I don't know. Uh, there is a little bit of... Uh, concerning you know discord there uh looks like the stock is going to be a little low but uh i'm going to try to get one either way and i don't need one whatsoever but i personally uh always try to go for the halo cards each generation and that is because i can always sell off the older ones for pretty much the same price that i bought them at or even with the 4090s case i actually sold that card for a profit more than I bought it for initially. So for me, uh, I'm pretty much gonna get a 5090 for for free, pretty much. Like I, I'm literally gonna break even if I'm able to snag an MSRP 5090. That's just me personally. Right now I'm using a 4070 Ti in my system, so that'll hold me off until I can uh, get a 5090. If I can't get a 5090 at launch, I mean, I'll just have to wait, I guess. Not a big deal for me though. All right, so I'm gonna do a little pros and cons of the 5090 and look at some of the strengths of the 5090 and why it might be useful for VR and then maybe some of the weaknesses of the 5090 and maybe what you could do to mitigate those weaknesses. All right, so first of all, some of the strengths. The first strength of the 5090 that's pretty beneficial to VR, at least I would think so, is the video memory so it's got 32 gigabytes of gddr7 memory that is already faster than the 4090 which what already had really fast video memory and it's even more video memory i mean 24 gigabytes was already pretty overkill there's no vr game that's going to take advantage of 24 gigabytes but who knows maybe in the future we're gonna have um you know, 8K texture packs or something like this, texture pack mods for VR games, right? There's a lot of those UE VR mods that are coming out that are basically taking flat games and converting them into VR. You know, a lot of those Unreal Engine games have a lot of uh, high-end textures in those games. So this is pretty much gonna future-proof you, but for VR, I mean, right now there's literally no game that's going to take advantage or be able to take advantage of even 24 gigabytes i mean if you, even if you have a 5080 you're pretty you're going to be pretty good you know with those 16 gigabytes of video memory for pretty much any vr game that's coming out especially now since most vr games are um going to be trying to be built for the quest you know what i mean so that 32 gigabytes not exactly relevant to us but it's uh, definitely nice to have but not only that but now the bandwidth is so much larger as well it's at 512 bit now all right that is a an enormous amount and if you don't know what i'm talking about uh video memory from graphics cards have this thing called bandwidth and that just means how much data can go through this a uh, bus width basically it's called a bus width because it's pretty much like if you can imagine like a highway and imagine a bunch of traffic going through that highway well the more lanes you have the wider that highway is right the more traffic you can push through that highway so pretty much like a graphics card if you have a wider bus width uh, there's more data you can push through there. So the higher the resolution that you go up in video games, the um, more it's going to uh, congest your your bus width, basically. So having higher bus width is better. That's why um, when the 40 series came, came out and uh, we saw all those uh, 4070 Ti's and 4070's with those really low uh, bus widths, um, we saw those cards doing really poorly at 4K resolutions uh, comparative, compared to 1440p or 1080p because 
um, that video memory was getting bogged down. There was just too much data going through a very narrow bus width and it just could not keep up. So having a wider bus width means we can play at higher resolutions and have an easier time doing so. So uh, the 1590 having such a high bit, uh, bit width is uh, really beneficial to VR users because we're playing at such a high resolution, right? We're playing at resolutions that are higher than 4k right we're looking at micro oled displays now that are able to push like 3880 or 3840 by 3840 per eye that's freaking insane like insane right that is like almost that's pretty much 8k resolution right there and even 8k on a 4090 is insane to run like it is really really hard even older games so yeah basically the better or the wider the bus width, the better. And the 5090 has a, a bitch ton of a bus width. Like that's a lot, 512. And also not only that, but it's fast. It's like 1.7 terabytes, right? Per second. That's, that's really, really fast. So good on that. Now, the second thing uh, that is really good about the 5090 that could be beneficial to VR is for PC VR Quest users like you and me or wireless wireless streaming as well, right? So uh, with Quest, we have to have that video encoded and then sent over to our headset uh, via the um, via wirelessly or uh, with Quest Link, right? So um, what happens is that video file or whatever it's basically uh, streaming that game, recording that game uh, from the graphics card and then sending it into your headset. So the faster that that can encode, the faster that the uh, graphics card can capture that footage and send it over to your headset, the less latency you're going to have, the better image quality you're going to have. Also, the uh, actual encoders uh, have better image quality to them as well. So they're going to be more efficient. They're going to be faster. There's going to be more encoders as well. And this also means that it's going to be easier to record your gameplay while um, uh, streaming that video to your headset as well. So pretty beneficial to us Quest users who are um, playing over Wi-Fi or playing uh, directly linked to the uh, computer itself. But there are negatives, all right? Negative number one is obviously the the power amount that it takes. I mean, up to 575 watts. That's just effing insane. Now, my plan, I, I've seen a video by a YouTuber where he actually tr took the power limit down to 75% and then he was able to just overclock the core like 250. And then he pretty much got the same exact performance as a stock 5090. So I'm planning on doing something similar to that because I really do not want to put that much heat into my room. My 4090 was already putting an insane amount of heat into my room. And I pretty much uh, play with a, my room closed sometimes it, because my wife is like right in the living room watching her movies or whatever. And, you know, I'm doing stuff here. So I kind of want a little bit of privacy. I don't want there to be a lot of sounds. Uh, bleeding through so i typically close the door and that means that um there's an uh, there's a lot of heat that gets you know trapped inside of the room well with my 4090 i mean it was already heating up my room pretty fast you know within one hour i'm already sweating balls well with the 5090 being you know almost at 600 watts consistently that's pretty insane i mean i'm probably not going to be at 600 watts because you know i'm going to be limited to 90 fps most of the time, but still, you know what I mean? Still, it's still going to be pushing more wattage um, than my 4090 on average. So uh, I can't power limit it, limit it though, according to some YouTubers. So that's actually pretty cool. And the second con is, of course, the price. It's starting at $2,000. And that's just for the Founders Edition. If you want to get like an AIB card, it goes all the way up to $2,800. And that, you know, that's before any scalping prices or anything like that. That's just launch price. And that's just crazy. I mean, if you told somebody six years ago that a GPU is going to cost $2,000 starting, they'd freaking lose their minds. Like that's just absolutely 
insane insane that is i mean some people's computers cost don't even cost two thousand dollars you know what i mean you can buy freaking four ps5s for two thousand dollars i'm just like boggles my mind it is an insane price insane but hey if you want the best of the best that's unfortunately what you're gonna have to spend these days so is it worth it for two thousand dollars only if you are the highest end of the highest end gamer you know what i mean if you are planning on getting like a pimax crystal light or if you're planning on getting one of those new micro oled display um uh, vr headsets you're gonna have to have something like a 5090 you're not gonna be able to push those pixels uh with a 5080 you're just not you're gonna have to look at something like a 4090 or better yet a 5090 it's just the way it's gonna have to be if you're gonna have to get if you're gonna get one of those high resolution display uh, uh vr headsets you're gonna have to you're going to have to go with a 5090. It's just how it is. So um, it's up to you. But if you have like something like a Quest 3, I wouldn't worry about it, honestly. Most VR games are pretty easy to run. Uh, however, if you are looking to play a lot of flat games that were converted to VR, those are a lot harder to run. So in that case, I would consider a 5090. Or if you're looking to play like fight sims or racing sims, stuff like that at high resolutions, uh, then I would consider a 5090. Only in those cases though. In any other case, I would not worry about it. Like you don't need a 5090. All right, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you all for watching this video and subscribe, peace.